19-year-old Chloe Manichon's favorite pastime is this, sharing her fashion hauls on TikTok. Today, she's letting me into her closet. Or should I say closet? Here, I have about three closets. Wait, did you just say three closets? <laughs> okay, I only have one closet and it's like from here to here. So for this one, we have just mostly jeans, skirts and then dresses. So I have a few hoodies and then all my crop tops over here. And then for the last one, it's just all my t-shirts and shorts. I think there's like a hundred t-shirts in this cupboard. Where do you buy all your clothes from? Um, mostly they're all from online shops like Shopee, AliExpress and Shein. How much do these clothings cost? Mostly for my tops, they range from about 4 to $10. This one actually costs even cheaper, costs $3. $3? I have this same top in three different colours. And altogether, it costs $9? Yep. So when you can find a bargain, then I'll just keep buying it and buying it and buying of course. it. Since 2010, there's been an explosion of online retailers offering extremely cheap and trendy clothes in Singapore. According to Singapore's Consumer Price Index, clothing prices fell to its lowest point in 10 years in 2020. I want to find out, how is it possible for clothes to be sold this cheap and what it truly costs us when we buy them. I'm starting my investigation by finding out how our clothes could be even cheaper than they were 10 years back. Helping me break it down is Kay Hana. She's got over a decade of experience working in the fashion industry and coaching students on fashion design. Why did we see the prices of clothes drop to its lowest in the past 10 years? The main uh, driving factor uh, for the price fall would be e-commerce. The thing is, with online retail, there is fierce competition, isn't there? They have to bring down their prices if they want to have a market share. We are also looking at volume here. The more you are producing a single item, let's say a single uh, dress or a top, uh, the cheaper it gets. Are online retailers able to produce much more than traditional retail stores? Yes, they have consumers all the way across the world. There are some mega e-commerce stores that are dropping about 500 items to 1,000 items every week. Wow, well, 500, 500 to 1,000 items a week. A week. Right, and that is only in one category. And not only that, they can make all this really, really fast because they do vertical integration uh, when it comes to supply chains. So they own the production companies, they own the fabric dyers, they own the logistic companies. Because you can get a top designed, marketed, sold in within a week. 24 hours. Yes. Within 24 hours. Within 24 hours. We are all familiar with the term fast fashion, but um, e-commerce has made fast fashion even faster and it's now called ultra-fast fashion. Ultra-fast fashion. They are a new breed of retailers that operate largely online. This is their business model. They find a trending style, create initial designs in small batches, test demand. If successful, more of it are produced super quickly in order to capture the demand. Concept to sales happens in about two weeks or even less. And then the entire process is repeated. While as consumers we benefit from the plethora of choice, what happens though when we make way too many clothes too fast? I'm meeting Chu Wong for some answers. For the past eight years, she's been examining the impact of our fashion consumption. Today, she's set up a test for me. Hi, Chu, what are all these kettlebells doing here? So these kettlebells represent the carbon emissions from three different industries. The maritime shipping industry, the airline industry, and the fashion industry. Okay. Oh, this is silly. <laughs> Each kettlebell represents 10 tons of carbon emissions. Can you guess what is the carbon emissions per second from each industry in 2018? I think I'm going to go ask for some help. Yeah, sure. Hi. Hi. I'm Cardiff. Hello. Hi. Each kettlebell is 10 tons, which represents 10,000 kgs of carbon emissions which are released into uh, the air per second. 
So what do you think is the carbon emissions from each industry per second in 2018? I would say half of it will go there. This is so heavy. I feel the weight of carbon wow. emissions. So Everyone I approached ranked airline or the maritime industry the highest in terms of carbon emissions. And as for the fashion industry? So you think fashion is the least? Yeah. Just two? Okay. Let's go. Let's go. Whew. Whew. Okay, two. We are done. So let's go over to maritime. So here you have three kettlebells, which means you think that it emits 30 tons of CO2 per second. The correct answer is 22 tons of CO2 per second, which means it's two kettlebells. Okay, but she was quite close actually. Yeah. So for the airline industry, you place five kettlebells on table, so that's 50 tons. The correct answer is 19 tons of carbon emissions per second, which is also two kettlebells. Wow, that's surprisingly little. For the fashion industry, originally you had three kettlebells, and now you see we have seven means the actual answer for this is 67 tons of CO2 per second. 67 tons! So the carbon emissions from the fashion industry is the most? Yes, fashion is just a clothes, I mean material, mm -hmm. all these things. Are you surprised? Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised. I'm surprised too. So I always thought that airline is the worst pre-COVID, you said. That's crazy, right? So how does it make you feel? Horrible. Quite blown away by this amount. Compared to the maritime sector and the airline industry, the fashion industry contributes more than triple the carbon emissions every second at a whopping 67 tonnes. So Cho, why should we believe this statistic? Even though the numbers for the fashion industry vary from report to report, the consensus is that the fashion industry does have one of the highest carbon emissions and it's even dirtier than some industries such as the maritime or the airline industry. Why are the carbon emissions from the fashion industry so high? The first is that the fashion industry has a very long supply chain and touches upon many other industries within it. It starts with the agricultural, the petrochemical industry for the raw materials. It goes on into the manufacturing industry for the fibres to be turned into fabrics and eventually into clothing. It touches the packaging industry, it touches the logistics industry and then eventually reaches the retail industry and to us. The second reason for that is because of the overconsumption of the overproduction of the business models today. So, is cheap fashion worse for the environment? Cheap fashion tempts us as consumers to purchase more because of the accessibility. And so more is produced and that's what makes cheap fashion so dangerous. So in terms of fabric production, many fashion businesses nowadays choose to use synthetic fibres such as polyester, acrylic, nylon because they are cheaper fibres than natural fibres. Synthetic fibres have a higher carbon footprint because the extraction process is very energy intensive and that's because synthetic fibres are oil-based fibres. So why should we care about carbon emissions? Carbon emissions caused by humans are one of the leading causes for the global climate change. What can happen, especially for us in Singapore, is that we're going to have more extreme heat, we're going to have more rain bombs, we're going to have potential flooding in the future as sea levels rise. We never give it much thought when we go on our shopping sprees, but the mass production of these cheap clothes is having a destructive impact on our environment. I need to find a way to shop for clothes more sustainably. But can I do so without breaking the bank? Can I buy clothes as cheap as this, but 100% sustainable? Three shirts for $20? It doesn't hurt to buy them in three colours, does it? I've seen this dress everywhere on Instagram. 10% discount? Let's buy it. Little did I know that the low cost of these clothes come at a hefty price. I want to do my part. That's great. Today, I'm doing a photo shoot to support a local sustainable clothing brand. They're made of eco-friendly materials sourced from Japan. But here's the thing. 
According to a conscious fashion survey conducted by DBS in 2019, the main barrier stopping Singaporeans from buying sustainable clothes is still the price. This dress I'm wearing costs about $170. I want to find out if there's any way to get sustainable clothes for a much cheaper price. Over the next few days, I scour through stores and the web for the cheapest clothes I can find that are touted as sustainable. Apparently, some are as cheap as $10. Is that too good to be true? Susanna Jaffa runs an online platform that curates sustainable options of clothing. I'm bringing my haul to her to find out just how sustainable these clothes really are. So Susanna, these are the cheapest clothes I could find which claim to be sustainable, Okay. right? So I've got a top here which is purely organic cotton and another top here which is recycled polyester. This top costs $20 and this top costs even cheaper, it costs $10. So I'm wondering, how sustainable are these clothes? What I would do is I would take a look at the labels. So basically, what this says here is 49% recycled polyester, and the rest is actually 32% polyester, viscose, and elastane. So it's not 100% recycled polyester? No. So the great thing about recycled polyester is that it is made from recycled plastic, PET bottles. However, it still isn't biodegradable. So what about this $10 organic t-shirt? When it comes to organic cotton, it uses less pesticides when it's produced. However, it still takes 2,700 litres of water to produce an organic cotton t-shirt or more, just the same as it would a traditional cotton t-shirt. And that's more than we would drink in two and a half years. Not worth the $10 then. These brands can produce at these prices because the majority of these brands are still producing over 90% of their collections through the traditional fast fashion model. So it kind of cancels out the smaller sustainable capsule collections. So can I buy new clothes, which are probably as cheap as this, but 100% sustainable? I actually think that it's not possible because you have to think about the additional cost of production for better quality materials and for sustainable brands. That could cost them 50%, 60% more. For example, this t-shirt, this is perhaps one of 20, 30, 40,000 units of this t-shirt. So there might be brands that we work with here, they might just be producing 50 or 100. So definitely, that's going to cost more. And how can we discern if these clothes are really produced sustainably? You can look at the fabric that a piece is made from. Natural materials like linen, tensile, bamboo are definitely more sustainable, eco-friendly options just because it is biodegradable at end of life. Okay. But you need to go a little bit deeper, read labels, yeah. do research on brands, also look at how much information they are sharing. While no clothing is perfectly sustainable, eco-friendly options fulfill criteria like being made of organic and biodegradable materials. They're also produced at controlled quantities, with processes that use resources like energy and water efficiently. If it's impossible to produce clothes sustainably while still keeping costs down, I want to know if the quality of environmentally sustainable clothes is worth their higher price tag. Thank you. I've asked my producer to buy me six shirts and I'm putting them through a rigorous test. Three of them cost about $10 each and are made from the typical polyester, cotton or a blend of both. While the other three cost $30 or more and are made with sustainable fabric like tensil, bamboo and linen. I don't know which is which yet, so I'll refer to them by alphabet. First, the comfort test. It feels really light, really airy. It feels a bit hot and uncomfortable for me. So, the most comfortable top for me is definitely top A because it's very soft and it really hugs my body. 
and the most uncomfortable top for me is top C. The material is just too thin and it feels a bit scratchy. Next, the durability test. I'll look out for how resistant the shirt is to shrinking or expansion and colour fading. The clothes will be put through 30 washes. In terms of colour, top D has faded just a little bit. It's really, really slight. In terms of tops that have expanded in their size, it was top C. And this is top C that hasn't been washed 30 times. Well, it's longer in terms of length. And I also had a surprise item, and that was top B. Top B looks exactly the same after 30 washes. So turns out in this test, top A, my top pick in comfort, but shrunk slightly upon wash, is made of bamboo. Top B, hot to wear, but withstood multiple launderings, is made of polyester. Top C, thinnest, most uncomfortable and expanded upon washing, is made of a cotton polyester blend. Top D, breathable, slightly rough in texture that softened with washing and slightly prone to fading, is made of linen. Top E, medium comfort, shrunk a little after 30 washes, is made of cotton. And lastly, top F, smooth to touch and rather stretch resistant, is made of tensile. All factors considered, my top pick out of these six shirts would have to be the tensile shirt, which fared pretty well in the wash and comfort test. Yes, it does cost 47 sing dollars, but having lasted 30 washes, that amounts to just 160 per wash. And the more wear I get out of it, the cheaper. As for the cheap clothing in this test, I'm actually quite surprised that they fared much better than I expected in the wash test. Yet, in terms of comfort, they still pale in comparison. And I even found a hole in the polyester shirt right here. So I'm not surprised if people won't wear them for long or we would replace them with new ones, especially since they're so cheap. That makes me wonder, for the cheap clothes we no longer want, where exactly do they end up after? So what do you do with your cheap clothes when you don't want to wear them anymore? Donate them, then I'll donate my clothes. And do you know what happens to your clothes after you've donated them? No, I'm not very sure actually, because they'll just take the bag and then I don't ever see it again. Do the clothes we discard actually get a new lease of life after? I have never seen so many clothes in my life. Every few years, I'll jump on board the decluttering bandwagon and clear clothes out of my wardrobe. I'll admit, this is only one-third of the amount of clothes I used to have. The first to go are the cheaper ones, which have either worn out or, ooh, gone out of style. As with many, most of my clothes go to this to-donate pile. But I wonder if they actually do get a new lease of life. According to a 2018 news report, only about 10% of the clothes given to the Salvation Army end up at its storefront because the amount of clothes donated are far more than what can be sold. The remaining 90% are exported overseas. I want to find out how our second-hand clothes are repurposed when we export them. So I'm meeting Daru Tan from SNI Trading a company that has been Hello. exporting second-hand textiles in Singapore for Welcome. over 10 years. Let's take a look over there. Great, yeah. Okay, These are our second-hand clothing ready for export. Wow, all, all of this? Yes, all of this. <laughs> and there are more even at the back. And, and, and this too? Yes, all of this. It looks like a mountain of clothes. So where are all these clothes going to? 
These clothings are mainly going to third world countries in Indonesia, South Africa, Philippines, Malaysia, and many, many more. Yeah, why not let me show you to our starting area? Yeah, that would be great. Okay, let's go. So this area is our unsorted area. All these clothings have not been sorted yet. Why do we need to sort out clothes? It's because the clothing has different materials, uh, the conditions might be different. So this clothing is relatively good. The colour is very vibrant. There is no holes, no stains. Would this be considered um, grade A? Yes, this will be considered grade A. So this will be bought by people from overseas again. They will wear it again as good new clothing. Okay. And why not let me show you an example of a grade B. All right. So this clothing, there are too many stains. No one will want to wear it anymore. They will also be exported overseas where they will be converted into industrial racks. Okay. Oh, this looks like it still has the tag with Correct. it. Correct. Obviously, grey A. It's really good as new. But I feel like it's such a waste. Why buy it in the first place if you're not going to use it? Yes. So how about recycling? Can't we make new clothes out of old ones? It's too time consuming and it requires a lot of manpower for us to recycle old clothing. As a result, it's very hard for Singapore to have their own textile plant to recycle clothing. So why is it so difficult to recycle clothes? Because each clothing does not comprise of just one material. Take a look at this clothing for instance. So this clothing is made out of polyester and many, many other materials. It's just too many materials to break them up into their own original fabric. So is exporting our clothes the only way to reuse them? As of now, that will be the only choice. However, there are more and more import restrictions that other countries are implementing. It will make it even harder for us to export overseas. Why are import restrictions getting tighter? I mean, these are great clothes. Because the government wants to focus more on producing new clothing rather than importing used clothing from other countries because this will affect their domestic market. So, if all these other countries tighten their restrictions or even stop us from exporting clothes to them, what's going to happen to all these clothes? So we have to incinerate all of them and it's really a huge waste. Oh. In 2019, Singapore generated 168,000 tonnes of textile and leather waste, out of which only 4% was recycled. What this really means is that 4% of these textiles were exported. But because of tightening import restrictions, our exports of second-hand clothing items have fallen by 40% since 2018. Everything else ends up in the incinerators and ultimately the landfills. When I first started this journey, I would never have thought that buying and throwing away cheap clothes would be this detrimental to the environment. I've learned that for now, it's impossible to expect sustainable clothing to come cheap. Neither can we recycle our way out of the problem. So, what can we do? Well, perhaps less is more. During the entire duration of this filming, I've been using the same outfit. Four different looks from the exact same black dress. Can you believe it? This proves with a bit of creativity, I can change up my style with clothes I already have and do my little part in saving our planet.